The content and information provided within this video is for informational and educational purposes only. The information provided within this presentation is not to be considered medical advice. Please consult with your treating medical physician. Welcome to the second video in our series, Coming to the Table. Along with the companion print materials, these videos are designed to support those caring for children with significant neurological impairment and body positioning challenges, and to provide guidelines that will help you safely feed these children at home and at school. Hi, I'm Mary Ann Gellert-Jones, a speech-language pathologist and clinical feeding specialist at HMS School for Children with Cerebral Palsy in Philadelphia. I have been serving families and children with feeding impairments for over 30 years. One of the challenges of feeding and giving oral medications to children with oral motor difficulties is the significant amount of food, liquid, and medication spillage that can occur. This is alarming when we consider the labor-intensive nature of feeding these children and the extraordinary energy that they expend due to their neurological difficulties when eating. It can be concerning, especially if a child does not receive their entire dose of medication when they are administered medications by mouth. By simply providing a hands-on, or what I call a manual support, to assist with lip closure, head positioning, support for the base of the tongue, and jaw control movement, you can dramatically improve the safe and effective swallowing of foods, liquids, medication, and even the child's own saliva. Because this is so important to understand, we once again urge you to participate in a physical exercise. I'll be describing that shortly. To fully prepare for that, I urge you to pause the video while you get a glass of water, a small plate of food, and someone to play your role as a feeder while you play the role of the child. Then resume play. Thank you, if you prepared for the experiential exercises that are coming. I'm sure all of us, when providing a child with medication, whether it's Tylenol or a seizure medication, are concerned that the child receive their entire prescribed dose. When the person delivering the medication does not provide hands-on support for lip closure, or support the child who may need several swallows to get their entire dose of medication down, there is a significant chance that some of the medication will be lost through spillage from the mouth. The solution is to provide hands-on oral support. In this video, you will learn why it is important to manually support oral facial musculature during meal times and when delivering oral medications. You will also learn about the importance of lip closure for bolus control, safe swallowing, and decreasing the loss of food, liquids, and medication. In addition, you will learn various forms of oral motor support, including two-point support, three-point support, and assisted lip closure during spoon feeding and cup drinking. By using effective oral motor support, you can address poor oral control and mobility poor lip closure and open mouth posture, decreased tongue control and mobility, and upper lip retraction. These instances of poor muscle control in the feeding and swallowing structures commonly result in the following. Spillage of food from the mouth. Difficulty moving food within the oral cavity to chew foods or transport foods for swallowing. Delayed swallowing of foods, medication, and saliva. Challenges coordinating breathing and swallowing. And the penetration of food, saliva, and medications into the airway and the lungs is also a possible risk. If this happens, it may result in aspiration, which can lead to respiratory distress and pneumonias. In order for you to better understand the impact of lip closure during each swallow and the benefit of appropriate oral support, Let's start with some experiential activities.
I'd like you to take a sip of water and try swallowing it without closing your lips. What happens to the liquid? Did you swallow without closing your lips? Some people use their tongue and teeth together to create closure at the front of the mouth. This allows them to create some pressure to move the liquids and eventually swallow, but not before feeling the fluids flow all over your tongue. As you can imagine, this could be quite challenging, if not scary, for a child with feeding challenges. Next, I want you to close your eyes and mimic the sensory impairments that so often occur in those with such medically complex diagnoses. Now, have your helper provide you with a spoonful of food, but I don't want them to tell you when they're presenting the spoon. This is the wrong way to present the spoon, but I want to make a point. Now, still with your eyes closed, your helper should present the second spoonful of food. This time the feeder should touch your face, tell you what the food is that is being presented, and ask you to open your mouth as they gently open your jaw and provide assistance for lip closure until you swallow. See how different these two spoon presentations feel to you? Now you have some greater understanding of how to help the child process touch, language, and feeding in more enjoyable ways during mealtimes. If you consider these experiences even slightly challenging, you must imagine the difficulty encountered during feeding by a child with severely impaired motor control. It's important to understand that children with significant medical and motor involvement also present with visual and other sensory deficits. Therefore, it is important to touch the child during feeding and tell them what you are going to do what you are doing while you are working with them, and then what you just did after the process is complete. This will greatly improve their comfort with the hands-on approach. Now let's look at a few children who may exhibit such oral movement difficulties. Notice how this child has difficulty achieving lip closure when the food is presented in his mouth. He is losing food while trying to swallow. Poor lip closure can also result in increased fatigue during feeding and thus a decreased intake of food. Now we can see that through hands-on support for lip closure, there is significantly less spillage. If the support continues as long as there is food or liquid in the child's mouth, you can help ensure that all the food is swallowed efficiently and with increased safety. Some children require two to five swallows before they fully empty their mouths. This child displays wide jaw movements while trying to drink from a cup, making it difficult for her to engage in active sipping. This is due to trouble controlling lip and jaw movements. It is important to talk to the child as you begin to position your hands to provide this type of support, because it can be difficult for the child if you just swoop in to provide such a significant amount of support. When done effectively, notice improved control of jaw, head, and neck movements, and the improvement of lip closure. When this degree of support is given initially, the child can begin to learn how to improve their control, and the feeder can allow the child to do more on their own over time. You are simply providing the support the child needs to make lip closure and swallow safely. Your hands do not need to be heavy on the child's face, just sufficient to help avoid spillage. Both two and three point support are essential to know if you are feeding a child with movement challenges. Some children require consistent support throughout the meal and some only require occasional support. A small percentage of children have significant difficulty accepting hands on their face. If this is the case, it may be wise to explore this type of supportive touch during other activities away from meal times, such as face washing or playing. Often when touching becomes tolerated outside of feeding activities, it can gradually be brought back into snack times and then eventually meal times. Now, let's review this checklist that you can use each time you position your child for safe feeding. It's in the companion print materials as well. Is the child losing food, drink, or medication orally? If so, can the child tolerate manual support for lip closure? Is the child seated optimally? If not, they may have increased difficulty with oral feeding control. 
Does the child require more than one swallow to clear his or her mouth of food, liquids, or medication? If so, are you able to use your hands on the child's face to help support lip closure? Is the child able to achieve a chin tuck and maintain it throughout feeding and oral medication administration? Are you explaining what you are doing when you are feeding the child? Even if you think they do not understand all that you are saying, it's important that you tell them what is being done. Are you providing firm but appropriate supportive touch during feeding? You'll know that you've achieved a successful meal when you've observed the following. The child is stable, comfortable, and able to enjoy a meal with decreased loss of food or liquids orally. The child is able to accept manual support without discomfort or resistance. The child's oral motor support needs have been addressed. Remember, the definition of a successful mealtime is not an empty plate. It is a meal time in which both the child and the feeder engage in enjoyable and safe feeding. I hope this video has helped you to understand the important role that manual support can play in the successful feeding of children with oral motor challenges. Please look at the companion print materials for additional information and ideas on effective manual support.